And uh, I have my new coaching group, 2021 group with me right now. So um, hello, hello, hello. This is one of the typical type of lessons that I do uh, once every two weeks for the group coaching, uh, which is a little bit different than the uh, one-on-one coaching. But um, one of the things that I found in doing this um, new 2021 group was that uh, I seem to people seem to be having the same kind of problem, meaning that they have anxiety about where they're going. Because um, I'm teaching you, I think it's a total of 14 video lessons in total, plus the one-on-one uh, coaching class, or sorry, plus the group class uh, and the group lessons. So, you know, there's a lot of material. And, you know, it's kind of like that analogy. Have you guys ever heard that analogy, trying to drink from a, uh, um, a fire hydrant? You guys heard that analogy? Well, that's what I'm basically doing. I'm giving you 40 years of trading experience, right? So kind of to work backwards, this is going to be the new video number one that I'm going to do. And we're going to kind of outline where you're going to end up at the end of, you know, one month, two months, three months, as far as theoretic theory is concerned, okay? And, you know, so it's kind of, this, this should put some of your anxiety to rest, right? You know, 38 years of trading. So, you know, what are you going to learn by the time you're done this class? Okay. So when, when I was, you know, learning to trade and when I was working uh, at different institutions, prop firms, etc., cetera, um, one of my one of the things that I saw, which was universal, was universal, right? Is that um, <clears throat> the traders? Yeah, and I'm going to give you this quote. Actually, the way you make money trading is by not losing it in the first place. That's that's what I'm going to teach you, and we're going to get into specifics. But I don't want you to lose money because it's a proven fact that over trading is the number one cause of retail traders losses. It's a proven fact. It's a proven fact. That's why brokers give you all these free indicators. They give you free charts. They give you all this free stuff because they want you to over trade. So if you can learn to avoid randomness, and only trade when there is a good directional probability, you are you are 90% of the way to becoming a profitable trader. Really, really, really accept this. If you can accept this as reality, then, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty much done my job. Because... Everybody out there, everybody else out there is out there trying to teach you how to get into a market, right? And I'm teaching you how to stay out of a market. That's the primary thing that I'm doing. Now, I'm going to use some examples of that, right? And in my experiences at seeing thousands and thousands of traders um, lose money at prop firms, on chat forums, uh, in different groups, and coaching people. What I have found is that the best traders trade only the best trades, right? Now, I'm going to use, it, you can't argue with facts, right? So um, there is a case for scalping very quickly. But let's just forget about that, because in today's nanosecond world, you can't scalp very quickly unless you're an algo, because there's just no way to do it. So let's just look at some of the actual facts. Who's the richest man in the world right now? Anybody know? 
or who who has been the richest man in the world for a very long time? Okay, Bezos again, Elon Musk, yeah. But they go up and down. Arguably, would you say Warren Buffett is the richest man in the world? All right. Now, this is an extreme example because people aren't going to say Warren Buffett is not a traitor, but he is. Right. But the richest man in the world takes what? Five trades a year? Think about that. The richest man in the world takes five trades a year. What about Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk? Are they traders? Well, they sort of are, aren't they? Would they be the richest men in the world if it wasn't for their public companies? Yes or no? A simple answer. I know some of you are going to argue with this, right? It's kind of a philosophical question. But would, would Elon Musk be the richest man in the world without his public company? No. So, technically, he's a one-trade trader, isn't he? he take, he's taken one trade... And he's the richest man in the world. What about Jeff Bezos? Same story. Would he be the richest man in the world without his public company? So let's not get into the theory. I'm, I'm using these. I, I don't want you guys to go way off track and say, ah, and get all crazy on me. Okay. I want you to just understand that I'm using these extreme examples because in my experience at working at some of the top prop firms in the world, the guys that traded the least and only the best high quality trades were the guys that made the most money. Okay, so I'll, I'll bring it down to earth a little bit here. Uh, not even using myself. I'm going to use another example of another guy out there just as an example. Because, and how I know this guy's legitimate. But you guys have heard of that Stephen Dukes guy, right? Okay, this guy's legitimate. Okay, uh, this guy's a trader just like you, just like me. I'm going to use an example outside of me. Okay, if you learn about this guy, he's a young man, you know, immigrated from China, took a $20,000 account to over $5 million right now. Do you know how many trades he takes a month? He's a day trader. He's a day trader. You know how many trades he takes a month? Five, six. I know he takes a little bit more, but he, for the vast majority, the vast majority of his money, and he makes over two, three hundred thousand dollars a month, comes from two or three trades. Okay, so here's a more realistic example. And whenever I'm looking at other educators, the one thing that I look at, the two things that I look at if I want to know if they're real or not, is how much do they trade, number one, and what is their risk management, okay? So just accept this reality, please. If you can just accept this reality, the best traders trade only the best trades. They avoid randomness. All right. So let's get to proving that we know that the, the math proves that the markets are random 88 percent of the time. We know that by looking at the frequency distribution charts and I'll open one of those up right now. Of any asset. So if you run the frequency distribution charts, in other words, if you take an average of one year's worth of data, and you ask this, in this case, we'll look at the S&P 500. If you ask the, ask the spreadsheet to tell you what were the ranges and you bell curve graph it, what you'll get is something that looks like this. Bur burn this into your mind because in here lies the, the gold. In other words, what this is telling me is that 88% of the time, this particular asset doesn't move more than negative 1.5% down 
and 1% higher on any given day. So would you agree that 88% of the time the market is staying range bound in one to one and a half percent? So light bulbs should be going off in your brain right now. Because if that is truly the case, it means that the market, let me just give you like a, a bit of a graphical representation here. If this is the open or the close, and this is 1% and this is negative 1%, the market 88% of the time even though it might be going like that, it's doing it very randomly. And in some cases, it just does this. All right. There's all kinds of permutations that it can do. All right. It could do something like that. But the facts and the math proves that it stays within those ranges 88% of the time. So if you're trying to trade successfully, how in the world can you place safe stops? You can't. And you can say in every one of these, loc every one of these environments, no matter which one it is, let's say it's a trending day even, how many, let's say it's one of those days where it, even it's a fairly clear trend, how many places can you safely place a stop here and here? And that's on a good day. That's on a day when it moves one in a fairly decent trend to 1%, which is very, very rare. Usually, let's get rid of that. Usually it does something like this. Well, where can you place a safe stop in that, even if it does move 1%? Your stop has to be way down here. So, understanding that the market is doing this most of the time and stop placement and risk you're going to get stopped out a vast majority of the time unless you accept this fact. Now, this is the S&P 500. I have done this on literally 1,000 assets, and they all look the same. Now, some will vary in the degree. Obviously, if you did a Tesla or you did something with high volatility, the ranges are going to be like 4%, 5%. But still, it's, it's relative value, meaning that relatively, it's going to stay in the mean. Does anybody know or has anybody heard of um, uh, um, uh, Jim Simons? You know, Jim Simons, arguably the richest uh, hedge fund manager in the world, right? He owns um, Renaissance Technologies, quant firm. Do you know what their primary strategy is? The rich, the one of the richest, 25 billion he's worth. One of the richest fund managers in the world. Do you know what their primary strategy is? Mean revision. Their primary strategy is mean revision. Why? Because they understand this simple mathematical fact. In other words, when the market gets too far, he understands the math says it's going to revert back to the mean. The math says it's going to revert back to the mean. So I've just proven my case by showing you the most successful people in the world 
are accepting the fact that the market is random 88% of the time, and they're only trading the absolute very, very best trades. Okay? Now, I, I have worked at prop firms and I have seen thousands of traders, so I'm, uh, uh, but I'm giving you those examples as extreme examples because at the end of the day, even I've seen, I've seen hundreds of retail traders and I've seen the guys that make the most amount of money. They just don't trade very much. And when I lose money, I lose when I overtrade. Okay. So if the market is random 88% of the time and the, very, and the best traders only trade the best trades, the next logical step should be to avoid the 88% of the time when the market is random, right? Or only select those assets that have the greatest probability of success. Does everybody agree? So how do we do that? Well, the way that I have found to do that is by learning and understanding the business models of the floor traders, the market makers, the prop traders, the institutional desk traders, the hedge funds, the macro hedge funds, the real professionals. Because if these guys are making billions of dollars doing it, I want to be doing what they're doing to a certain degree. So I need to know how do they do that. How do they do that? And the only difference between the market maker, the floor trader, the prop trader, the institutional desk trader, and Warren Buffett is the time frames that they're trading on. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to teach you is over the course of these next video lessons and what this group should have learned by now, because that's what this is all about. This is a live session right now with my students is what should you have learned by watching, watching the first eight videos, okay? So this is what you should have learned by watching the first eight videos. Number one, learn how to quantify the order flow with the proprietary spreadsheets. If you guys do your spreadsheets every single time you're going to trade, you will eliminate 90% of overtrading. And more importantly, it will keep you on the right side of the professional order flow. Okay? To this day, guys, I still fill out my spreadsheets before I take a trade. I know. Sounds crazy, but I do. I actually write them out by hand. Number two, understanding the importance of value. So you should know how to do the spreadsheets by now. You should be able to understand where value is because this will allow you to learn the levels on the chart that are, are best to engage the market with the highest quality directional edges. Remember, the best traders trade only the best trades. Three, learning to read pressing limits, which is part of the business model or understanding the business model of the professionals. This will alert you to any potential dangers or changes to the current market conditions. Number three, learning to find liquidity levels. Or sorry, number four, learning to find liquidity levels. The market is an auction. Its primary purpose is to find the highest number of buyers and sellers. You guys know when you, you, know, you go to an auction and that guy's up there screaming like a maniac? 100, 200, 150, 150, 150, 150. Market, that's all a market is. It's just an electronic version of that. So the markets move from areas of low liquidity to high liquidity. That's what that auctioneer is doing, right? Do I hear 100? Nothing, right? Do I hear 90? Nothing. Do I hear 80? 80, 80, I hear 80. Okay, he's got some action. 
Do I hear 85? 85, 85, 85. He's got more action. Do I hear 90? 90, 95, 95, 95. Do I hear 100? 100, 100. The, the, the louder the action gets, or the more liquidity at each level, that is what the market is doing. The market is constantly advertising for buyers or sellers. So by understanding where liquidity is parked in the market, and you learn that in, I believe it's video five or four, maybe six, I can't remember. But by understanding how to gauge where liquidity is, you can tell where the market is going to go. Because at the end of the day, to put a, put a simple mantra in your head, I always think of it this way. Markets move from liquidity to liquidity. So by, by understanding where liquidity is, you can understand where, where targets should be or where the market is most likely to go next in relationship to value and in relationship to pressing limits. And then finally, not finally, but one of the most important things that I teach, if you, if you take nothing from my course, but my money management rules and how to use the Kelly spreadsheets, this is the real golden goose of trading. As a very advanced trader myself, a trader that likes to that that will take more risk than most traders, that's who I am. I'm a trader that will take more risk. The reason why I'm here this long is because of my money management skills. This is the one thing that you must be anal about. This is the one thing where there's no compromise in. And in my money management lesson, I teach you the very best techniques used by the top prop firms in the world. They're so important that the top prop firms in the world build these, this money management into their software so that you can't fuck it up. Okay. And then the later lessons are psychology. Many, many traders struggle with psychology. And it's a big, broad topic. But after years, and I do mean years, even to this day, I'm learning new techniques of research, personal trial and error. I have discovered the absolute best tools and techniques to control your, your emotions and manage trust during the trading day. And then finally, we wrap it all up with how to swing trade and adapt to changing markets. Okay? So by the end of the first month, at least in theory, what you will do is in summary, I will share with you how you can read the markets through the eyes of the of the business models of the real professionals and to limit and control risk on every trade so that you never blow another account by over trading and randomness. And the goal is for you to be able to quantify every trade by doing the spreadsheets, by understanding liquidity, by understanding where value is, by watching the pressing limits so that you can contextualize the market. Then you can use the money management that I taught you and strategize a trading plan. That is what you will learn. That is what you should learn at the end of one month. You should be able to do that. So in short, this is a complete A to Z education that will equip you with the tool to trade any market conditions for many years to come. Now, obviously, when you're a newbie, 
I don't want you trading any market condition. Obviously, for you guys, I want you to be only trading the trades that have what we call or what I teach you the A trades. Okay. But in theory, you should be able to do this. You should be able to understand how to take a B trade or a C trade. Right. But for now, for the first year, at least till you double your account, I only want you taking the very best high quality A trades. All right. So this is where you're going to end up at the end of one month. Or should I say this is where you should end up by the time you're finished all the 14 videos that I have. Okay. Theoretically. Now, just because you understand something in theory, does that mean you're going to be able to pull it off in reality? Probably not. And that's why we have the group coaching room. So that I can look at every single one of your trades. I can look what you did, see how you did it, and then correct the mistakes. Right? So it's very, very important if you want to get the most out of this education that you share with me everything that you're doing. And the more you share, the more I'm going to be able to do you really know how to quantify each trade? Do you really know how to contextualize it? And do you really know how to manage the risk? Okay. All right. So, so far, do you guys that have been with me maybe a month, maybe two months now, do you guys have any questions about what it is we're trying to do and where we're going and I know you're going through each video individually, right? And, you know, there are always questions during the, each, each and every video where you're trying to really understand each particular concept, right? But this is the end goal. This is the end goal. Is to be able to look at any market and make a very well thought out strategized plan that will give you a, a, a contextual quantifiable way to gauge the degree at which this trade which any trade will work or not work does that make sense that i'm not here to teach you a trick trade i'm not here to just teach you a trades right I could have made a video for one video and taught an A trade setup, right? And sold it for $99. But just teaching you one little setup or one trick trade, I, I, that's effing useless. Because you wouldn't have the confidence to sit through the drawdown or you wouldn't be using the right money management with it. You have to understand the why something works. You have to have confidence in what you're doing. And it's only through understanding all of the videos, understanding all of the education, and showing me your trades for six months and correcting those mistakes that you're going to have true confidence as a trader. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Are there any questions right now? I'll wait for a minute. Okay, I'm going to actually stop the recording right now. Um, and uh, if anybody, because I'm going to put this on my website, right? 
Um, and uh, anybody that's interested and likes what I've said so far and really wants to learn this, head on over to my website, stevepattersontrading.com. I'm um, sorry, there's some questions here. Dan, is the Kelly sheet covered in Chapter 8? Yeah, it'll be covered later, Dan. You'll get that. Steve, will you eventually make a video giving examples of what A, B, and C trades look like? Uh, Norman, you should know what a A, B, and C trade look like by now, shouldn't you? Aggressive, moderate, and passive. Right? <laughs> Are you? You've sent me several A trades so far, haven't you? <laughs> All right. I mean, let's, let's look at, let's go back and see what Norman, let's go back and see some of Norman's trades. So Norman's and the guys are sending all these trades, right? So um, here you go. They're all here. All right. Here's your trades. All right. You showed me them. Okay. You didn't take any trade here. But you're showing me what you're looking for, right? So let's go back and look at some of the other people. Right. Uh, let's go forward, actually. Okay, there you go. There's an A trade. There, right? If, if I'm saying it's good, that's why you're sending me the homework, right? If I'm saying it's good, then it's, an a, it's a good trade, right? So it's all here. That's what you're sending me every day, right? Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right, guys, thank you. That'll wrap up this lesson. If you don't have all the videos, because um, I know some of you only have up to video five. Norman, what do you? how many videos do you have? Do you have them all yet? Maybe that's why you're a little confused there. What, what video are you up to? What video number are you up to? Okay. All right. So guys, do me a favor. Type in the room. You only have the video. Aid. Okay. That's great. Type in the room, your email address and the video that you have up to. And later this afternoon, I will add you to the rest of them. Follow the instructions. Tell me the video you have, the video you have up to and um, your email address. Okay. All right, guys. It's been fun. It's been about two or three weeks for some of you. Some of you, it's been a month. But how are you guys liking the course so far? Be honest. 10 out of 10. Germ says it's great. Steven says he loves it. Love you too, Steven. <laughs> Norman says, great, I'm confident I can survive in the market. Germ says, I would recommend it. So there you go, guys. Live student feedback, 10 out of 10, great, blah, 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 blah. Okay, guys, we're just at the beginning. Remember, we're on a journey, and I want you guys to understand. I just finished up my, my uh, 2020 group coaching yesterday, and, you know, it's, it's, it's been a blast. And a lot of those guys are doubling their money every month. I had Sin told me yesterday that he tripled his money. He tripled his account last month. Had another guy, John Stroud. He doubled his account in January. I don't know how he's doing in February. But the other group is doing great. Uh, not everybody. But the vast majority, there's still a few guys that are breaking even, but nobody's losing money anymore. Okay, guys, love you all. Bye for now.